Hello and welcome to APT National News Weekend. I'm Daryl Stranger. This week marked the federal leaders' debates in French and English. For the first time, APTN News had a journalist asking the federal leaders questions. Here's Brett Forrester with a breakdown of what happened in the English debate. The totem poles towering above the podiums were a subtle indication there'd be no avoiding indigenous issues as five federal party leaders vying to lead the country faced off. You can't take a knee one day if you're going to take indigenous kids to court the next. That's not, that's not leadership. Mr. Singh, that's you not love make that line about taking it's indigenous not, kids to court. Uh, it's what? actually not true. There were a few exchanges like this during an at times fiery contest. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau found himself on the defensive several times. And for the first time in the event's history, APTN was there to grill the leaders. Melissa Ridgen asked the incumbent Prime Minister why he deserves a third mandate. Canadians and Indigenous people uh, are losing patience with uh, the lack of results from all of this spending. So I guess the question is, why would they believe you this a third term that they would get results and you would be accountable for all that spending? In response, the Liberal leader stood by his record. When we came into office, there were 105 long-term boil water advisories. We lifted 109 of them, and for each of the ones that are remaining, we have a project lead, a project uh, team, and an action plan, and we are going to lift those all. Ridgen asked the leaders about clean drinking water, treaty rights, dismantling the Indian Act and responding to the national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Conservative leader Aaron O'Toole opposed the UN declaration on the rights of Indigenous people and promises to crack down on blockades. Economic reconciliation is the center of his platform. What I want to do as Prime Minister is build that type of nation-to-nation -nation dialogue and partnership so that the next generation has intergenerational wealth and opportunity transfer, not trauma. And building that trust will be core to me. It's the torrent of racist abuse nurses hurled at Joyce Eshaquan as she lay dying in hospital prompted demands for reform. Bloc Québécois leader Yves-Francois Blanchet had this to say when asked about systemic racism in the province. I recognize the existence of systemic racism in June 2020. And then what happened? It became a political tool against Quebec. His comments got a strong rebuttal from Green Party leader Annemi Paul, who also targeted Trudeau. It seems all too often that uh, reconciliation is treated like a buffet. You can opt in for this, pick this, you know, pick this plate, but not the other one. Uh, and that applies to what we've seen uh, with, um, with Mr. Trudeau and, uh, and the Liberals. But the Liberal leader refused to sway, saying those who criticize him are being cynical. Unfortunately, the cynicism that Mr. Singh is showing on saying we all. did nothing is harming reconciliation and the path we're moving forward. We but Singh brushed off the accusation speak. briskly. I mean, it's a pretty ludicrous thing to say. What's damaging reconciliation is Mr. Trudeau looking Indigenous people in the eyes and saying, I'm going to deliver clean drinking water and then breaking that promise. Despite the joust, no clear winner emerged. Advance polls open today and only 10 days remain until the vote. Brett Forrester, APTN National News, Ottawa. Gatineau, Quebec, in unceded Algonquin territory, was also the host of this week's French language leaders debate. Indigenous languages, the environment, and water were among some of the topics debated. Here's Tom Fenario with some of the highlights. Le débat des chefs. At one point, the French language leaders debate had a kind of existential question. As in, why are we having this election debate at all? Dans un quartième vague de la COVID-19, Monsieur Trudeau, c'était la mauvaise chose à faire de déclencher une élection quand on sait on est toujours des défis. Et particulièrement parce que la seule raison pour laquelle vous avez déclenché cette élection, c'est pour une raison égoïste, d'avoir plus de pouvoir. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau wasn't just forced to defend his decision to call a pandemic election. He also came under fire for his party's performance with regards to the climate change crisis. C'est à vous de décider pendant ces élections. Est-ce que vous voulez continuer sur le même chemin six ans de faillite? On voit ce soir tous les différents partis disent oui, on est sérieux sur l'environnement parce qu'on est un pays de science et de respect pour la science. 
la réalité, c'est qu'il faut se fier aux experts. Et les experts, Exactement, les environnementalistes, les climatologues, euh, les, les économistes disent tous que c'est le Parti libéral qui a le seul ah, vrai vote. The two-hour debate included a section devoted to indigenous issues. Perry Simon of Ganasatage Mohawk Territory asked the leaders a question regarding reconciliation. Seriez-vous prêt à inclure les langues des Premières Nations, les Inuits, des Métis, parmi les langues officielles du Canada? Bloc Québécois leader Yves-François Blanchet, the NDP's Yagmeet Singh and Green leader Anami Paul all supported the idea. Trudeau sidestepped the question, choosing to instead emphasize actions his party has already undertaken. Mais nous avons pris, uh, difficilement, mais nous avons pris la décision de nommer une gouverneure générale qui uh, ne parle pas nos deux langues officielles parce qu'elle parle une de nos langues officielles et l'Inuktitut. Conservative leader Erin O'Toole also neglected to say if indigenous languages should be made official languages in Canada. Rather, he emphasized improving access to indigenous languages. Et il y a deux semaines, on a annoncé un investissement historique dans la santé mentale uh, des Autochtones pour les services dans les langues traditionnelles. Another topic of note, water. Trudeau again found himself on the defensive with regards to boil water advisories on First Nations. On en a éliminé 109. Il nous en reste uh, une couple douzaine, 50 à peu près. Trudeau recommitted to ending them, but the general consensus from the other leaders, not good enough. C'est une honte à l'échelle internationale. Il faut au-delà des engagements électoraux que tout le monde dise d'une même voix, on va voter pour que ce soit réglé maintenant à la satisfaction des communautés autochtones touchées. Tonight, the leaders will reconvene to do it all again in English, where indigenous issues are once again expected to be on the table, with our own Melissa Ridgen asking the questions. Tom Fenario, ABTN National News, Montreal. There was a lot of back and forth, but a highlight for us here at ABTN was having a journalist participate in these debates. Our very own Melissa Ridgen hosted the open debate on reconciliation, starting with a question about dismantling of the Indian Act. Okay, I think if there's one thing that Canadians and Indigenous people can all agree upon, it is that this Indian Act system is not working for anybody. How would you dismantle this broken, top-down system, and what would you replace it with that would ensure that Canada still is living up to uh, its constitutional obligations to Indigenous people? First of all, we are looking forward to dismantling the Indian Act. Uh, it is a commitment of ours, but it is not something that Ottawa gets to decide. And what replaces the Indian Act will vary from community to community as we live up to our obligations. And that's why over the years, as we've moved towards self-government, we have accompanied uh, in uh, communities, some who want to start with health, some who want to start with education, some who want to start with economic development. Every community, every nation across this country gets to help define what its path is forward. We will be there to listen, to partner, to build a better future every step of the way. The, the way to go forward is to listen to leaders. And Mr. Trudeau ignored one that he had in his own cabinet, in Jody Wilson-Raybould. That was a huge lost opportunity. We've been speaking to people with how we can accelerate treaty resolution. There are some treaty negotiations, Ms. Ridgen, that have been going on, as you probably know, for decades. We need to solve it, and we need to work with Indigenous leaders. There's incredible Indigenous leaders in nonprofits, in the private sector, in industry, in academia. We need to use that governance capacity to finalize treaties and build partnerships Absolutely. because the best way forward is success for Indigenous peoples alongside their neighbors, See, alongside... I, I, Mr. Singh and then Mr. Trudeau. I'm coming to you, Mr. Trudeau. Uh, Mr. I'll just Singh. jump in on this one point. I, I think absolutely the solution has to be Indigenous-led, mm -hmm. and I think that's the starting point. And for a long time, we've seen that there's been a top-down approach that has to change. It has to be Indigenous people at the table. But I want to talk about the impact, so just so we understand how severe this is, how the Indian Act is creating injustice and perpetuating injustice. I spoke to B, who's a young woman, a young girl who lives in Iskandiga, and she told me in her own voice, she said, I'm a 12-year-old girl and I'm fighting for clean drinking water. How does that make any sense? Those words haunt me to this day. I think about what 12-year-olds do and they certainly aren't fighting for clean drinking water. It's what, that is a legacy, I wanna, that is the impact of the Indian I, I really just want to try to recenter our conversation on Indigenous peoples and what we are going to do to fulfill the many unfulfilled 
promises and commitments that have been made. Uh, and I, I would say, perhaps, to pick up on, on what has been said, you know, that it seems all too often that uh, reconciliation is treated like a buffet. You can opt in for this, pick this, you know, pick this plate, but not the other one. Climate change is also a huge issue this time around for voters. Moderator Shachi Curl asked the leaders how they will create effective climate change policy when so many people still don't believe it exists. Here's part of that exchange. How can we achieve real progress when so many people are still debating the fundamentals? Mr. O'Toole, you begin. Climate change is a real threat, not only to Canada and to the world. And that's why we have to take a serious plan to tackle it. That's why, as I said, we put our plan out in April because we had to restore some trust on this issue to make sure we can show Canadians we can get emissions down and get the economy working again. That is key. We have a plan to meet our Paris targets but minimize the impact on jobs and investment. We're also going to make major investments in electric vehicles, in the hydrogen economy, small modular reactors. There is so much we can do to get our emissions down but grow a strong economy because without think, a strong economy, we can't tackle climate change. We can't tackle okay, the issues of but today. The reality that Mr. O'Toole has never understood is you can't have a strong economy unless you tackle climate change. And you ask about how we're going to convince the quarter of Canadians who still don't think climate change is real. Well, Mr. O'Toole can't even convince his party that climate change is real because they voted against that. Well, here's the thing. We just heard uh, Mr. O'Toole and Mr. Trudeau argue about Who's worse? And honestly, it's a tough question to answer. Let me tell you, you're not stuck with these two. Better is possible. We can invest in a clean economy. We can end fossil fuel subsidies. We can make sure we're creating clean transportation. And we can invest in provinces and territories to make sure they have the resources necessary to fight the climate crisis. I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. I'm going to be a dad soon, and I want to make sure my, my child grows up into a future that has the same opportunities that I had, that has clean air, clean water, a clean place to live. I want to make sure that that's as far, different. As far as I understand it, it is not a national or even less a regional issue. It is a planetary issue. And it has to be tackled by everybody at once. But I would be glad to give some of my precious time to Mr. O'Toole because a week ago, a little more than that, he said in French that he did not want anymore to have a pipeline to go through Quebec. That was quite a statement. He said that in French, no more pipeline through Quebec. I want to hear that in English tonight. No, please, please. <laughs> well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Oh, hold on, hold on. Quite, this, honestly, this segment is, time, yes, quite, 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 no. quite, um, quite frankly, this, <laughs> We're not gonna this, let that happen. this on the climate, uh, this sort of approach is going to get us nowhere, and I mean but nowhere. Uh, it is, and the question was an excellent one. This is an, a global issue. Uh, this is a national issue. This is a nonpartisan issue, and we have got to be able to come together across party lines. I wanted, I said that I was available for a debate just on the climate because it's that important, but we, and we've invited many times all of the parties to join us in a joint cabinet, a cross-party cabinet, to deal with this the way that we dealt with the pandemic, together. People were so inspired to see these leaders come together yeah. in the early days of the pandemic. We have got to bring that same approach here. We Let's do. come together. Manitoba's Métis heritage was on display at the English Leaders' Debate as our host Melissa Ridgen sat on the journalist panel for the federal English debate. Michelle Karlenzik has more on the Métis designs that Melissa was sporting. Andriane Dandino launched her business, Anne Moulier, sewing in her parents' basement. Now the Métis Anishinaabe woman from Winnipeg will see her designs sharing a stage on national television next to political leaders. I definitely was 100% honoured because um, I think it's the perfect piece because it's so classic but yet the floral detail is, uh, you've never seen that before and it's so original so I think um, yeah, I think it was a perfect uh, fit for, for her event. APTN's Melissa Ridgen will sit on the journalist panel for the federal debate and will sport the Moulier jacket. Dan Deneau is not the only Métis artist Ridgen will be wearing. She'll wear Jake Freeman's jewellery, another Métis artist from Winnipeg who makes beaded earrings. Freeman taught herself to bead on YouTube just three years ago. Since then, her designs have been featured on national stages like Governor General Mary Simon's swearing-in ceremony. 
I, I'm just really honored that someone would reach out and specifically ask that I create something for them for for a special event that they have. I think that's more meaningful, I guess, than than you know, seeing it on TV. For the first time ever, a female Métis journalist will participate in the debate wearing two female Métis artist designs. Freeman says it's about more than just fashion. Supporting each other and, and having that sense of community as well within uh, whichever nation you're in, whichever Indigenous nation, I think is important. To make those connections, I think, is, is I think, the real um, exciting part for me. Moulier says a lot has changed for Indigenous artists since those days inside her parents' basement. I've always had the spirit of my of my heritage in my collection, but I have to say it wasn't um, easy to sell 10 years ago, and I find it now there's lots of positivity, and um, I feel it's just, uh, it, you know, it, it feels good. And so I think as simple as it is, I just, it feels really good to have another woman kind of represent um, us Indigenous women in, ca in Canada. Moulier and Freeman say they will both be tuning in to the debate to watch their designs. Michelle Karlenzig, APTN National News, Winnipeg. All right, we need to take a short break, but still ahead, the Manitoba Métis Federation is offering prizes through a draw for their citizens who vote. The Manitoba Métis Federation wants all Indigenous people to get out and vote in this year's federal election and they are giving their own citizens an incentive by offering a draw for a number of prizes if they vote. Here's that story. Manitoba Métis Federation citizens could find themselves driving a brand new car just for voting. Any MMF citizen who takes a picture outside of a polling station and tags the MMF will have their name put into a draw to win PlayStation 5 consoles or the grand prize a brand new Chevy Spark. This competition uh, process and incentive process that we're putting in does not tell you how to vote, who to vote for, or any particular candidate. It actually says take a picture outside a polling station uh, and that you're going out to vote and look in the website and here's their answers to the 15 priorities and you choose who you believe would best serve your needs, your family's needs, your community's needs, or your nation's needs. Citizens who help bring others to polling stations will also be eligible to win one of five 50-inch flat-screen TVs. Chartrand said the MMF did not reach out to Elections Canada regarding the incentive. I did not uh, phone Elections Canada to tell me how to run my government or how to get the incentives uh, established, uh, and I don't think they have a role to play in that, in my view. Uh, elections Canada has got to make sure that I'm not in any way going out to, uh, if, if I'm using any type of uh, incentives, probably to choose one particular party or candidate. Uh, that definitely would probably be in question for Election Canada. But to get uh, democracy in place, to get our citizens out to vote, uh, Elections Canada should be supporting it. Elections Canada wouldn't say if they support the prize draws or if they don't, and whether or not it violates the Election Act. We can't comment on specific cases. It would be up to the Commissioner to determine if there was a violation of the Act or not, if they receive a complaint based on the particular facts at hand. The Commissioner's Office said they do not confirm or deny whether a complaint has been filed regarding a particular issue. If the issue falls within the Commissioner's jurisdiction, a review or investigation may be carried out to determine whether or not there was, in fact, wrongdoing under the Act. Chartrand added the money to pay for the prizes is not federal money and hopes the incentive gets young voters out. We're getting stronger now as Indigenous governments and we're having more flexibility to try to use other tools. Uh, they're using, for example, incentives to get vaccinations for, in this country in some other parts of the world. Uh, and, and some large quantities of money are being offered just to get a vaccine. So we're looking at that idea and saying, well, if it's working there, maybe it'll work for us to get the young voters out and, and those that are afraid to go out. Daryl Stranger, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Southern Alberta doesn't have any Indigenous candidates for the federal election, so we, we asked grassroots nonprofit organizations what their priorities are. As Tamara Pimentel reports, the priority for some is intergenerational healing. When APTN News met Shannon Little Light in summer of 2020, she was living in the first recovery home for Indigenous women in Calgary. It brings me hope. It, it makes me feel at peace with my life. 
Earl Thiessen of the Oxford House Foundation says there are now five of these homes in Alberta and about 60 people have lived in them. But as the federal election nears, Thiessen, who has struggled with addictions in the past himself, calls for more across the country. I don't believe a person can, can fully heal without the proper supports in place. Right, so coming down to housing, coming down to funding for cultural supports, focusing on, on recovery and Indigenous healing for me is, is priority. And it's also a priority for the Calgary Aboriginal Friendship Centre. Community outreach worker Krista White says issues like food insecurity are barriers for healing from intergenerational trauma, especially for the urban Indigenous population. Another, you know, contributing factor would be inadequate housing and overcrowdedness. I would say maybe half the popul indigenous population uh, live, you know, live off, off the reserve, you know, across Canada. And Marilyn North Pigan. She's the first Blackfoot woman to run for city councillor in Calgary. She's involved in many nonprofit organizations like the Friendship Centre. For her, healing starts with education. We need to start with the education piece with, with the you know non-Indigenous community right now. So that's going to help our, our people in the long run. She says the new federal government needs to look to municipalities. The federal government needs to start paying attention more to what's going on at a local level because you know right now we're getting frameworks that are not suited for our communities. So we need to listen to the communities in order to adjust these frameworks that, so they work for them. Thiessen says these recovery homes are the only kind in the country. There isn't a time limit for residents here. And while provincial funding has helped in Alberta, the organization needs the help of Ottawa to make it national. Our people need a lot of healing, especially with everything that's with, with the residential schools and the, the children being found. It, it's crushing people, right? We were, we were feeling suffocated somewhat before now it's it's amplified. Tamara Pimentel, APTN National News, Calgary. All right, we need to take one final break, but still to come, Newfoundland and Labrador RCMP are investigating the sudden death of a tireless advocate for Indigenous rights and justice. Welcome back. Newfoundland and Labrador RCMP are investigating the sudden death of an Inuk person known as a tireless advocate for Indigenous rights and justice. Angel Moore reports. Family members have confirmed to APTN News that DM Saunders, formerly known as Delilah Saunders, was found deceased in Happy Valley Goose Bay yesterday. After the 2014 murder of their sister Loretta, Diem became part of the Family Advisory Circle for Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women and Girls. Also a water and land protector, Saunders participated in a hunger strike protesting against the Muskrat Falls hydroelectric project. Saunders advocated for changing organ transplant policies after they were denied a liver transplant in 2017 after some personal struggles with addiction. Known to many people as an inspiration, Diem will be greatly missed. Angel Moore, APTN National News, Chibukduk, also known as Halifax. Our condolences to the Saunders family. That's all we have for you on this weekend edition of APTN National News. I'm Daryl Stranger. Thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend.